I confess to you, I watched a little bit of this and then found it unstomachable. I just, I, Gavin Newsom is so annoying to me. He's just, he <laughs> kept interrupting. He was dying to show that he was a tough guy, which is of course like a note to all men. If your instincts are show how tough I am, don't do it. Don't do it. You're about to do something that will communicate the exact opposite of toughness. Right? That's how he seemed to me. DeSantis was measured. He was scoring a lot of points. But I wound up thinking like anybody would win against this guy Newsom because he's so annoying and unlikable. What did you think? Well, first of all, Chris and I <clears throat> watched almost all of it until Hannity talked him into adding an extra 20 minutes. Right. <laughs> and then we, were, we, we couldn't do any more. But it was, it was interesting to me at a couple of levels. Uh, Partially because it was actually held in my old district, now Ferretta, and I'm very, very close to Sean. Um, but also, I thought the contrast of the two states, when you look at the record of Florida, the record of California, and then, and I want to pick up a second on what you said about toughness. The truth is, uh, Ron DeSantis was the captain of the Yale baseball team, was served in the U.S. Navy, and I have no doubt that in terms of pure toughness, uh, he is tougher uh, than Newsom. He's probably not as mean as Newsom, but he's mm. tougher. Uh, but it clear, as clear as the, as the evening went on, Newsom and his consultants had decided that he would basically audition to be Joe Biden's best friend and that his job was to attack DeSantis personally. Uh, and, and frankly, he lied so often. I mean, I, I watched Newsom and I thought, and you know, he wants us to believe um, – talking to you from Florida. He wants us to believe that Florida with no income tax is somehow a higher tax state than, than California. And that the California price of gasoline, which is $3 a gallon more than Florida, somehow is really good for working people. And you go down the list and you just think to yourself, this is a guy who can say anything with a straight face and count on you uh, to not be prepared to take him head on. But I found a uh, I thought that DeSantis was better than he had been in the presidential campaign. And I thought that, uh, like you, I, I, I found Newsom sort of so off-putting just as a personality that it was hard to actually take his argument seriously. Yeah, he had no dignity. That's what I was missing. There was no dignity. It just looked like a man desperate for attention. And whenever DeSantis was scoring points on him, he would interrupt over and over to try to talk over the points as just a, you know, that's like a middle school debate tactic, which is pathetic and, and not effective. Here's a little bit of how he sounded with the personal attacks, rather than really going after Florida or Ron DeSantis's leadership, he tried to get to him being down in the polls, which he is, that's a whole other thing. Um, but here's here's how Newsom sounded in SOT 8. I, I'm, the one that, I'm the only guy here that's a border state governor. You're trolling folks and trying to find migrants to play political games to try to get some news and attention so you can out Trump Trump. And by the way, how's that going for you, Ron? You're down 41 points in your own home state. So that's how he sounded most of the night, whereas DeSantis was, he had clearly done his homework on the many, many problems in California. The, the moment that, there are a couple of them, but two of the <clears throat> moments that people are talking about more than any other are this one. I'll just let it speak for itself in SOT 4. So I was talking to a fella who had made the move from California uh, to Florida, and he was telling me that Florida is much better governed, uh, safer, better budget, uh, lower taxes, all this stuff. And he's really happy with the quality of life. And then he paused and he said, and oh, by the way, I'm Gavin Newsom's father-in-law. I mean, <laughs> that was pretty good. I thought that was, I thought that was close to a home run. <laughs> right. You're the king of debating. That was a good one. That was very good. Uh, so yeah, there was no real answer for that. And actually Newsom wasn't able to answer it. Then DeSantis brought up the disgusting, filthy streets of San Francisco, which we've been covering in the news now for a year, unless you're President uh, Xi from China, in which case they'll clean it right up for you. Uh, but this was quite a moment with the, what people are now referring to as the poop map in SOT3. It's an app where they plot the human feces that are found on the streets of San Francisco. And you see how almost the whole thing is covered because that is what has happened in one of the previous greatest cities this country's ever had. Human feces is now a, a fact of life, except 
when a communist dictator comes to town. Then they cleaned up the streets. They lined the streets with Chinese flags. They didn't put American flags there. They cleaned everything up. So they're that's willing so to do it for a communist dictator, so but they're not willing to do it for their own people. I, I want to get in with such, the limited time we have left. I want to get there are two. So that's the defense. It, it's such nonsense. Is it? Well, look, I mean, I think that at a fact basis, and this is what really puzzles me about California, at a fact basis, politicians like Newsom and the California Assembly have crippled uh, what's arguably the greatest state we have. And it's, it's a beautiful state. And Ron DeSantis was able to say things he liked about California when it was uh, Newsom's turn. He didn't even try. No. Uh, I mean, you know, he because said, just to clarify, you know, they were asked to say something nice about each other's state, and Ron DeSantis did yeah. it, and Newsom didn't. That's right. It was amazing. And then DeSantis was actually very generous in his comments about California as a community, as a beautiful place, et cetera. Uh, and I, I thought in that sense that uh, DeSantis clearly was better than Newsom uh, in terms of the whole evening and the effect he had. Uh, and I thought it was good for him. I don't, I don't think it particularly helps you in the presidential race, which is a different kind of problem. But I did think that he did well. And I can tell you from the view down here, uh, <clears throat> he's a very, very good governor. Uh, and uh, he's a much better governor than he has been as a presidential candidate. Well, the, the thing is, what was interesting to me is there are real questions about whether Joe Biden can see this through. And, you know, whether it's his age, his health, or he just gets pushed out as the nominee. And who who do they have in waiting? There's a, there's an article out today uh, saying there's no plan B. Democrat, Democrats are in a panic, according to Reuters, because there is no plan B. That's a quote from a senior Democrat. If Biden were, quote, suddenly not to run, however that happens, everyone you know would run, says this person. The vice president scares no one. Um, and he said he believes that Newsom is all over the place, partially to remind Democratic voters that he is out there as an option, and that's what other Dems want want to do. Like, we're still here, we're good backups. But let me ask you, Newt, are they? Are they good backups? I look at things like, I'll play this in SOT 5, and I think, this is not good for Gavin Newsom, for us to be reminded of his policies in that crazy state that he's ruining. SOT 5, take a listen. Do. But let me just say something about parents' rights, because he Bobby. says California respects parents' rights. This is rich. He's been telling a lot of whoppers tonight. This may be the biggest. In California, if you're a parent in Iowa or New Hampshire or South Carolina, mm, your minor choice. child can go to California without your knowledge or without your consent and get hormone therapy, puberty blockers, and a sex change operation yeah. all without you knowing or consenting. How in the heck is that well, you know what? honoring parents' rights when you're bringing people from out of state to go around their parents' backs and getting life-altering surgeries. That is radical. That you know, is Ron, extreme. These kids that is an assault on live. parents' rights. You know what, Ron? It's not this for is, you to decide. These, it's for the what? parents to it's decide. The mm. I mean, you tell me, because that's a, as clear as it comes when it comes to policy and a distinction. Sure. And, and, if, and if you remember... Over and over again, uh, Newsom would fall back into, if you question this, you're homophobic. Uh, you know, so you, you, you weren't allowed to question the, the books that they have uh, for elementary school in California, uh, many of which are overtly sexual and overtly in favor of um, either transgenderism or, or certainly gay and lesbian behavior. And this is in first, second, third, fourth grade. Uh, and you have, I thought it was fascinating, and I would I would give DeSantis and his team credit. They were very well prepared. They had props, as you pointed out, on, on the poop map as an example. But they had a series of these props that were real. Let me tell you a story about a guy named Leo Grillo. Leo was on a road trip and came across a Doberman. This dog was severely underweight and clearly in trouble. Well, Leo rescued the dog and named him Delta. Sadly, Delta was just one of many animals that needs help. And this inspired Leo to start Delta Rescue, the largest no-kill, care-for-life animal sanctuary in the world. They have rescued thousands of dogs, cats, and horses from the wilderness, and they provide their animals with shelter, love, safety, a home. Their dedication and everlasting love 
to animals winds up being Leo's mission and his legacy. Delta Rescue relies solely on contributions to stay available and open. And if you want to care for these animals and you want that to be part of your legacy, speak with your estate planner because these are tax-saving estate planning uh, benefits too. You can also get those. You can grow your estate while letting your love for animals live well into the future. Check out the estate planning tab on their website if you want to learn more and speak with your advisor. We call a dog a man's best friend for a reason. You can help those who need it most. Visit DeltaRescue.org today to learn more. That's DeltaRescue.org. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.